So we just finished season one of Halo and it was an attempt. Unfortunately, not the best one. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and this is Film Flare, where we discuss anything and everything that makes film and television great. So be sure to subscribe and let's talk about an unfortunately underwhelming show. Cortana, I'm gonna need you now. Find the Halo, win the war. Now, the show season finale did air about a month or so ago, but it has taken me a while to fully compose all of my thoughts on this. There was a lot to think about and review with the show, the games, and all of the background lore that goes with it. Initially, I did kind of like the show when it first premiered, and there's still a lot I think is good with it. Unfortunately, all of that good does get overshadowed by a lot of issues, inconsistencies, and just questionable decisions by the showrunners. I can actually overlook a few of the creative liberties taken with the show, like the Spartans having newer Mjolnir armor that wasn't created until long after the events have taken place. They simply just went with the most recognizable version from the games. It also doesn't bother me too much that they just reskinned Blue Team as Silver Team, with all of their members closely resembling their video game counterparts. And I really don't care that Miranda Keys was changed so much, especially in her interactions with Dr. Halsey. I can even forgive the fact that they added a human to the Covenant side of this war to bridge the gap between both sides. Now, as controversial as that one was, I think that was one of the few positive changes that this show actually made. And there were moments where I actually did like McKee's storyline. I can even understand the decision that's mostly regarded as blasphemy in this world of having John remove his helmet. As far as the show goes, it's just easier to tell a more effective and moving story when you can actually see the actor's face and all of their emotions that come with it. Sure, some shows have managed to get away without removing the helmet, I'm talking about The Mandalorian, but that, I think, is an exception to the rule. For the most part, on TV, you really do need to see the actor's face. And I actually liked the casting of Pablo Schreiber in this one. I'm a fan of his previous work in action roles, and I actually did think that he did a good enough job in this one, for what he was given at least. I really do think that this series should have been his standout role. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out the way I think everyone was hoping for. Now backtracking to the helmet issue, one thing that I think helped the Mandalorian was that his character was always doing something. He was always searching for something or going somewhere or protecting something. He was always in action basically. And there was always something for him to do so it never felt like we were just staring at a blank helmet on screen. Even when he did have to talk through the helmet, his emotions were subtle and understated, yet still clear enough for the audience to get an understanding of his character. But this show just has a lot of standing around and doing nothing. And when you're doing that with just a static face of a helmet, that really is a boring show. So understandably, the helmet had to come off in this one. And that's not what I think ended up hurting the show. I think they tried to overcompensate with all of the storytelling and the emotions they wanted John to feel, where it just felt way too forced and not at all realistic. On the contrary, when stuff was happening in the action sequences is when the show really came to life. It was there that the Spartans really felt like their video game characters doing physically impossible things that looked kind of out of place on screen, but that's something that I think we all really liked and it's just a shame that there wasn't too much of it. Halo is an action video game. You're always moving, you're always doing something, and that's when the show was at its most fun peak, when the action was ramped up. But we only got glimpses of that, and for the most part, this series was trying to tell a human story off an IP that was really meant to just be aliens fighting each other in increasingly ridiculous situations. And in trying to tell a more grounded story, this series really did stray away from what Halo was meant to be. 
The only times it felt like we were watching the Master Chief we all know and love was episode 1 and occasionally while fighting the Covenant throughout the show. And after that first episode, Master Chief felt a lot more like a Spartan 4 than he did a Spartan 2. He was just way too undisciplined and emotional and trying to be human, which is something he was never built to do. He shouldn't care about going out on the town to see what regular people are doing or care about other humans like he tried to do with McKee. I mean, let's all just be honest about what the show was implying was going on between the two of them. For Master Chief, that's just wrong. And much of the saying can be said about Kai. The showrunners at least tried to rationalize what was happening with John by saying that the artifacts were having some sort of negative effect on him, but with Kai, she was just being stupid for no reason at all. They just weren't who they were supposed to be in some sort of vain attempt to make the show stand out on its own. Now, before this show premiered, I was actually really excited to see Master Chief outside of his suit, but it turns out there just really isn't anything interesting about that. Which kinda means there isn't much interesting about most of this show. Again, I think that's because Master Chief is a character meant to either be in action or standing silently looking menacing and Master Chief walking around outside of the armor and holding conversations is neither of those. And then even when he was inside the suit, there was a whole nother issue, which is that he and Kai just both felt way too underpowered. I mean, Kai actually freezes up like it's her first time in combat. And while John does show brief glimpses of brilliance, he still loses a bit too much to be accurate. Riz and Vanek were the only two acting like proper Spartans throughout the entirety of the show. And speaking of non-Spartan Spartans, Soren looked like he should have been a great character. I mean the series even goes out of its way to showcase an explicit protocol named specifically after him. Put up the alarm. Scramble everyone to landing bay. Full Soren protocol. And I think he has a great backstory. But he does just kind of feel underutilized for what he really is. And if this series does get renewed for more episodes, I do think there is more the show could do with him. And I do hope that he's not just kept around as a pirate out to get rich. I owe you one ship plus a shitload of deuterium money. And I'm also not a fan of how quickly Halsey was made out to be the bad guy early in the season. I do understand that that's her path in this universe, but it all just felt a little too quick and rushed to have a specific bad guy for the show. Well, you're hardly going to arrest me. And don't even get me started about Quan. I did like how the show opened up with an outer colony being attacked by the Covenant, but after that, there wasn't any need whatsoever for any of that magical storyline. I get that the showrunners wanted to tell a more rounded and complete story by showing some of the Outer Colony insurrection that was the reason for the Spartans creation and still existed even underneath the whole aliens are trying to wipe us out and that there was still human to human conflict underneath their species fight for survival but the way they told it in the show just had no connection to the main storyline whatsoever and really just felt shoehorned in there for the sake of a single character that honestly nobody cared about. I'm going to free Madrigal even if I'm the only one left to fight. This show had a lot of hype and potential going for it, but the direction that it went in really did squander most of that for seemingly very little trade-off. Maybe this can all just be chalked up to the difficulties of converting this universe for the screen, or just a miscalculation on the part of the creators, or maybe they just didn't even understand Halo well enough in the first place. The showrunners have gone on record admitting that they actually took very little inspiration from the game in order to make the show feel like its own thing, and that they knew that some people would be upset with the decisions they made. But I think those decisions ultimately alienated them from the people who made the show possible in the first place. But what are your thoughts on the new Halo series? Let me know in the comments below. 
All episodes are available now for streaming on Paramount+. Plus. But before you go and watch that, please do be sure to give this video a like and go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this. It really helps us out. And until next time, have a great day and don't forget to watch a great show. Bye. Silver Team on me.